ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy here. How are you? How are you guys doing? This is part two of setting strategy. Uh, this is a uh, maybe not so much a trading psychology masterclass, but also a uh, technical uh, masterclass. I will try to keep it short. Um, the first thing I want to say is there is a part one. Part two only makes sense if you have watched part one. Um, I even believe that uh, part one is uh, where I have um, discussed into depth the mental framework that's required for a good selling strategy. If you haven't uh, watched that video, I highly urge you go and watch that video first. It's just 30 minutes, but please, when you watch this video, make sure you're fully dedicated and committed. Don't open TikTok, uh, other social media, uh, social media channels, your trading view and so forth and so on. Watch the video, make your notes, and rewatch it again if you take this serious. And then go back to part two. So last time, and I will briefly uh, touch base on what we discussed last time, so everything is going to make much more sense. What we need to understand is selling is mentally, psychologically way harder than buying for many reasons. And all these reasons, I have shared them in part one, explained them in part one in such a way that it will resonate with you. We and you, we all should understand people who are taking their money and their wealth serious. If you don't have a plan, I'll write this down. If you don't have a plan for profit taking in this bull cycle, in this bull market, you're setting yourself up for some serious face, face palming later. A lot of face palming later. You're going to hate your life. You're going to blame yourself. You're going to crush your confidence. You will not be able to tap into your competences. Last time I shared my rules, and I pretty much believe that these rules apply basically on a lot of investors and traders. Let's go through them very quickly. I'm not going to deep dive into them, just very quickly. Selling the top is for losers, period. There's no perfection, right? Perfection is for losers in trading and investing. Don't aim, you know, don't try to be that guy that wants to catch the pico top or the pico bottom. No, it's really impossible. Of course, it creates a lot of clout, a lot of engagement, uh, but really, uh, even like a broken clock is uh, right uh, once, uh, uh, once a day. The all-time high uh, P&L you have is just one single data point and it doesn't mean much. Don't let a number anchor uh, into your uh, mind because if that happens, then you will never be satisfied with any outcome. A quick example, imagine your all-time high, uh, your equity in your equity curve is one hundred thousand dollars, and then there's like a decline. You're now twenty percent down. For you, this feels like a loss of twenty thousand dollars, even though you're still in profit. What you're doing actually, you're comparing your current situation with all-time high situation. This is a very bad thing because if that all-time high scenario, if this, um, if you use this, if this enters your body and uh, your mind. Uh, and it uh, an um, an anchoring bias kicks in. Uh, you will never be happy. That's why my third principle is selling everything between twenty, even up to forty percent uh, below your all time high is really fine. Is what I believe. Um, because there's just no 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 perfection. If it could be you know ten percent, eight percent, that would be even better. But the thing is, if you want to ride the trend and the momentum, the, the, the real trend, um, it, it's, it's impossible to catch the, the top. So you need to realize that uh, you're always a little bit too late. And that's fine. That's why I'm saying selling anything between 20 up to 40% below your all-time high is really fine, especially in crypto. Also, understand when it is enough know your own situation and know when it's enough. 
imagine you started with 10k and you're now sitting on two hundred thousand dollars maybe it's the time to cash in and realize your profits uh, for 70 percent or 80 percent of course you want to write a trend as long as possible but i believe if i have made a lot of money that can change my life entirely don't let i don't let greed uh make my next decisions and i want to cash in know when it's enough because if you do not know when it's enough it's never enough what happens with people who don't know when it's enough and they they are they have never enough they will always aim for the next for the next one x next two x the, 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 you know greed doesn't have any limits when things are going up eventually things will go up it's how the markets work um understand who is in profit and who will sustain this bull trend uh, we will use a few indicators uh, again please don't use any indicator in isolation it's always uh, being you know used as a confirmation or confluence lastly a plan without any selling strategy is no solid strategy period if you have a plan with your entries with your stop losses your, your plan how to do you know gonna play the DeFi plays how to you know um, um, uh, plan with the, the really hot categories uh, uh, buying the you know um, things with uh, a lot of momentum but you don't have a solid selling strategy then sorry you have uh, prepared yourself for uh, a lot of screw ups always have a selling strategy like a very basic one is always better than having no selling strategy what happens all often with people with no selling strategy they uh they will fall into uh, a lot of biases and a lot of stupid mistakes they will just follow the crowd we all know the crowd uh, often loses a lot of money have a selling strategy period so what I'm using myself um, when I'm in a um, when there's like a trend a, um, a primary trend uh, there are some signals warning me to take profit or to be extra cautious there are many things you can use and I have limited myself to a few uh, it's really simple I'm using the moving averages there are as I uh, the different divergences especially the Bibikiti Pro divergences I will dive into that uh, a little bit deeper later Fibonacci levels uh, the uh, NUP or NUPLA I should say I think there is a uh, mis uh, spelling mistake there and the MVRV so let's go a little bit to the charts uh, or even better to the MVRV so this basically displays who is in profit and who is not in profit um, as you can see here the the blue line which represents the MVRV which is the ratio of coins market cap to its realized cap uh, basically tells us if something is overvalued or not this here should tell you or should trigger you a few things it should trigger you to ask yourself the question who is in profit and who will sustain the trend anything around close at you know around two or i mean a three uh should be at least a warning signal again don't use this in isolation um you could also use like a 3.7 3.5 but i believe around 3.3 you should be alerted you should be you should say uh focused you should be um warned um you should be um cautious because often when it's around these levels around you know the three and up level it is when most people are um greedy and blinded and uh, just following the hurt and then we have the new pool the new pool is maybe a better um, indicator to catch potential you know bottoms against we don't want to catch the real like exact bottom you're always a little bit too late with uh, you know um, catching the bottom or um, the top that's fine 
again, anything between two, 20 up to 40% below your all-time high P&L, I believe is just fine. Um, the closer to 10% is even better, but believe me, uh, as a trend trader, there are like a few, especially in crypto, that can uh, achieve that. So don't try to achieve uh, the 10%. I'm really happy already with 20%. When we are in the Great Inferior Zone, so when you see this line here, um, Nipple uh, exceeding the um, 75%, historically, this indicated a potential, uh, this indicated the top. We have seen it here. However, here, this was a pretty unique situation because it did not cross the uh, did not cross the 70 level, uh, but still we have seen a, um, uh, a, a strong um, decline. As of now, it's here around 50%, which would tell me, uh, based on historical data, we still have, um, the, the bull market uh, is not over from a historical time uh, perspective. Another one, and this is probably the one I rather prefer from all these uh, different um, um, uh, methodologies. Uh, of course, um, they are all in unique in their own way. So what this one does is uh, it's actually giving you a warning signal, not so much a sell signal. You could also see it as a sell, potential sell signal. If the 111 MA, daily MA, okay, um, crosses the double 350 MA. We have seen, and this orange line here is the uh, 111 uh, MA. It crossed here, a 350 double MA, and it marked here uh, basically the, the top um, back in 2018. In 2021, we had the same situation here it crossed that level, we saw a decline. Now, the 111 MA, daily MA, which is in this situation, the uh, quicker, the faster uh, MA, uh, is still um, below the 300 double MA. Uh, so historically, this would tell us we still have time, uh, and the market uh, top is not in yet. Of course, this is based on past data. This is no guarantee. You can still you know, mark tomorrow the top and decline. But historically, this would, um, um, uh, that would be the, the, the uh, less likely scenario. Uh, you can find this for free, Bitcoin Magazine Pro. You can check this whenever you want. I would say there's really no need to check this once in a, once in a day. Once in a week or once in a month is probably enough. The same with uh, Nupol and uh, MVRV. Uh, this is uh, also the P cycle top. You can also plot this, by the way, on your charts. Um, here, I already have it here. So it indicated here the cycle top. And it's pretty accurate, to be honest. Um, in 2013, um, 14, uh, 17, uh, let me go to the weekly because that would give me the full picture. And even here, and as of now, we don't have this uh, P-cycle top yet. Uh, however, I don't believe that TradingView has a official uh, P cycle top indicator. And we can use other people's uh, P cycle top, um, which you could do always if you use this, any one of them, any of these. Uh, you know, check with the website uh, where they also showcase the P cycle top and see if it does um, aligns, uh, if, if, they, if they're similar, if they are the same. So the P cycle top. What I'm using as well is um, the Fibonacci's. And let me explain you how I'm using this. So this is the Bitcoin weekly chart. Uh, 
I want to find the 1618 extension. Mm, let me do this. So if you connect the Fibonacci by having this high and this low, it will give you an extension here around uh, 61.5k. So normally my strategy is uh, when price is heading into this um, specific Fibonacci area, I try to front run this. Of course it can overshoot, but there's no guarantee. So I rather prefer to front run this by selling it earlier. Um, rather than waiting for a potential overshoot. Now, in this situation, for this current cycle, if I connect this high here with this low here, uh, by the way, if you want to connect Fibonacci and you want to be really um, exact accurate, use a strong magnet. I was a little bit too lazy. The 1618 extension sits around 175k. Imagine we bought Bitcoin around this level. Um, I might explain next time my uh, bottom signals. Uh, we celebrated an event uh, back in uh, 2020 and we called this event the best time is now we wrote the best the, the word uh, the, the letter B in best with Bitcoin B, like the best time is now. And it appeared to be in hindsight, it was indeed the best time, was the, at that time um, indeed around November as it marked the, the bottom. I connected this high here with this low here and it gives me this extension. If this is the potential target for me again I want to front front run it and also I do not want I, I and I repeat myself I do not want to fully wait until we're here to take profit because it's just not guaranteed in this situation we do see a consolidation we had the halving uh, there are a lot of things going on with the ETFs this is just consolidation, hopefully accumulation or reaccumulation. If this breaks out, and this is a six month range, um, it will probably, um, it, it, I believe if this breaks out, it will most likely uh, run very quickly to the, to the upside. I will not wait, however, to, uh, for Bitcoin to uh, get to these levels here. I would rather prefer to have different, just like with normal trade, different TPs, um, for example, here, uh, for example, uh, wait, I need to activate it here. For example, here, like selling here 10%, 20%, uh, and then here like 30%. The, the, I, I do also have not like one, uh, format uh, as of yet, but you, you got my point, right? Like you want to sell in phases uh, in a bull market. So on, on the way up, you want to take profit. Um, and my goal when we are here, um, probably at that time, I would have like 20, 30% as a, uh, or 30% as a moon back. Maybe we can even overshoot, uh, and maybe not. So again, there's no perfection. I'm not aiming for perfection, right? Uh, if, if it overshoots, for example, this is just an example, not saying it will happen, but theoretically to, let's say, 250k, I will not, I'm not going to blame myself and saying I'm, I was so stupid for selling it here at 95k and then 120k and uh, around 170k. No, that, that, that's not the way of thinking. That, that's really the wrong mindset. There's no such thing as um, uh, perfection. Um, then we have the RSI. The way how I'm using it 
is uh, very close to the way how the uh, creator of uh, RSI, um, who uh, is pretty similar to Wells Will, the, the creator of the RSI. We see here a very significant bearish divergence. Uh, of course, this divergence was here uh, as well. This was like a valid divergence. It overshooted. This was like a very chaotic period. I can uh, I can recall. But if we see a divergence on the weekly, this is for me a warning signal. So combine this RSI divergence. If a RSI divergence on the weekly occurs and it comes like from an overbought area and it aligns with the one six one eight. Uh, Fibonacci level this is a double warning signal this is a warning signal that it needs to prepare your mind mentally okay I'm about to sell I, I'm about to hit the sell button I mean, at that time really at that time you don't want to be on Twitter really you don't want to be on Twitter you want to isolate yourself and fully focus on your own principles those who are fully laser focused on crypto Twitter believe me there are way more perma bulls than perma bears of course, uh, if you're perma bull, it's more rewarding than being perma bear. But try to divorce yourself from all these um, um, guys who are always bullish. Okay. Try to have your own opinion. Okay, this is the RSI. Uh, another thing is when the RSI it crosses the seventy level. That's actually where the most magic happens, like you know this area. This is a very good example. Here as well, very good example. However, when the RSI crosses again back below the 70 level, this is a warning signal as well. So here, this was a, let's say, a let, let's go to the RSI here. Um, yeah, it did not manage to cross and uh, it, it declined. Here it crossed below and then went up and then below. So this should be again a warning signal like this, right? Because it made a lower uh, low. Uh, here as well. This is the exact methodology that was used by Wallace Wilder. Here it did not manage to uh, sustain this um, this mini low, and it dropped all the way down. That's one uh, way how to use this. Uh, another thing is eventually you're gonna see a slowdown of uh, momentum. One of my favorite tools is mm, the MAs. Look, on the daily, what I want to see is exhaustion. So this is a very significant uptrend, right? You can see this, this MA, 200 MA is going up, up, up. But here, what is it doing here? What is it doing here? It was actually in this tight range. You can even apply like a bollage band or another band. It, it, it's pretty tight, right? In my interpretation, this signals, uh, it, it's a non-trend. But if you see a non-trend coming from a significant uptrend, in my opinion, this translates into exhaustion. So this is exhaustion. The same here with the, with the bottom. This is exhaustion as well. Because it's flat after a severe downtrend. Now, I believe the 200 MA is still rising to the upside. It's still rising. It's not flattening. If it is flattening, I would be worried. Um, let me see. And, and then we have like the Bibicator Pro divergences. Uh, let me go to the weekly and see. Set this to 
um, 60%. So what it does is it's looking not only to the RSI, but like a bunch of different oscillators like uh, um, MPI, CCI, um, OBV, um, MACD, uh, the RSI. Um, I should have enabled this one and this one. Yep, it's connecting like the um, the wicks, but it's based on the calculation is based on um, the the candles, the, the bodies. Uh, just like it's for visual purposes, uh, it it's connecting the wicks here, and I think it's you you cannot. Um, uh, change this in uh, pan script. So the Burbicator Pro Fibonacci is on the weekly have been quite accurate in the last cycle. It marked here the top and here the bottom. So again, for my selling strategy, um, there are a few things. I watch the uh, the P cycle, the Fibonacci. I'm looking for uh, the divergences, and this will help me. This will aid me to take profit and to be a little bit um, uh, anxious, um, and to also be less active on crypto Twitter. Don't don't look for confirmation bias. Don't look for you know, these uh, permables when we are in a uh, crazy uptrend. Uh, because the question you need to ask yourself is who's going to sustain this? So again, my bottom line, like for the selling strategy, when things are going up, look for exhaustion in the Bitcoin chart because Bitcoin is leading. Bitcoin going down, altcoins going down. Um, Pretty sure a lot of altcoins will die out in the next cycle, so make sure you're not going to backhold them into the next uh, in the next cycle. Look for exhaustion signals, for example, a flattening MA, for example, on the on the on the 200. Um, another signal based on the MAs is when I see a bear cross using the 12 and the 21. EMA. Hmm. Wait, this is the daily. Not, I'm not interested in the daily. I'm interested in the weekly. Because here it marked pretty accurate the the the, um, the bottom. The here we got like a, a bear cross. Wait, was it by the way, a cross? No, it wasn't a cross. No, it wasn't a cross. They converged. But then the distance between those two MAs were getting bigger and bigger. And here the same, they are converging. If the um, 21 EMA is crossing the 12 EMA, that will be, um, it will be a reason for, uh, for being, that, that would make me cautious. That would me definitely make me cautious. So again, in this specific situation, in this uh, multi-month range, this is a six-month range. If this breaks down out, um, I'm expecting something similar like what happened here. This was also a really long range. Uh, with here and there like a fake out up, you know, another long range. Of course, this could be distribution, we could go down. However, I do believe that that's the path of least resistance. And if we go up, uh, based on, I'm gonna monitor MV, uh, MVR fee and uh, the new pool, um, the P cycle, but definitely, definitely this target here, this, uh, oh, sorry guys, this price level here, around 175k. Of course, it can overshoot. I'm not aiming for perfection. I will try to ride this trend as long as possible and sitting out these uh, very boring um, ranges. There's a lot of choppiness going on. With that said, this was part two of my personal selling strategy. 
there are a lot of different ways how to determine exhaustion in the chart. My preferred way as of now is a combination of moving averages, the RSI, the divergences, uh, especially if there's confluence with the Fibonacci. And I'm not using the Nupol MVR fear or the P-Psychotop as a, uh, in isolation, uh, but as a, um, let's say, like a double confirmation of my own unique um, methodology. If they are all aligned, it's definitely the time to get out. Again, this is part two. If you've missed part one, go and watch that one first and then um, re-watch this one again. A lot of people are doing a lot of efforts to find the best entry, to apply TA, to find entries. Not so many are doing this to find exits, uh, to exit the, the market fully. Um, hence the reason why people, they will remain fully invested during the bull market, but also the bear market. Crypto is a very dangerous place. I am pretty sure 90% uh, of many alts will um, die out. Don't be one of them. Have a selling strategy. Prime your mind, prepare your mind to take that profit. Be happy with that profit. Don't anchor any single number in your mind. As in, um, you know, when your uh, all-time equity was 100K, don't, don't let that uh, imprint, then don't let that guide you into your next decision. It's just one single, not significant data point, period. I hope this helped a lot. Um, please leave a like, share this with your friends. If you did not like this video, you can let me know in the comments. I read all of them. If you like this video, just drop a comment and say thank you or um, uh, something in that nature. Until the next time, see you around, ladies and gentlemen. I enjoyed doing this video for you. And I really uh, appreciate if you uh, can hit that like button and share this with your friends. Next time, I will do part three. And in part three, I will mention how I'm using uh, stop losses in my normal uh, mid time frame, low time frame trades. See you around. God bless. Bye bye.